like the real deal now. You're gonna kick this sorry ass out on the street. <laughs> you know what you got? This is what you own this week. We're back to bed to your ass is dead. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to week number 29 of the Lowdown Show on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night Smackdown from this past week. As also during the show, we have our Twitter poll segment called the Luke Gallows Polls, hosted by our very own Corporate Cappy and WWE Headlines, where we talk about any important news in the WWE. Every week, the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. And after we are done recording, it is posted for your listening enjoyment in full on Spreaker itself, YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, and Stitcher. So go check us out wherever is easier and convenient for you to listen to us. If you would like to join in on the conversation, have your thoughts and questions read and discussed on the podcast, tweet us at NoHoldsBarWP or by dropping a comment on YouTube. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And every week, I am continue to be joined by my co-host, the boss, Mr. Corporate himself. Actually, the blissful boss. Thank you. Corporate Cappy. Hello. 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 How you doing today, <laughs> Corporate doing? Cappy? How you doing? <laughs> doing uh, great. Yeah, doing great, too. I just got my new mic, as you can hear right now. I finally came in today. We went to go pick it up. Yeah, no corporate uh, mic. No corporate. We <laughs> I don't have any, any corporate... Uh, difficulties like yeah. last week oh my lord last week was a was definitely a dumpster fire like monday night raw this so, week shout out to you um, if you uh sat through that with the yeah I, but well, i apologize again it was just i didn't know about it until after i posted it and i'm like oh well what are we gonna do now that was <laughs> a really good episode too yeah well, well i'm sorry for you folks out there but you still got to hear me a little bit just so we amplified your voice <laughs> yeah, a little bit more you hear every time i breathe <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you could hear me breathe on this one, too. It's a new microphone. It's the first time. It's the first test. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But uh, I know we can hear me clearly since we did the test before this. But uh, anyways, guys, welcome to the Lowdown Show. We are week 29, almost at Survivor Series as well. And uh, basically, we're in the go-home week for Hell in a Cell, the yep. monumental pay-per-view. Yeah. Uh, we did they, a re- Hell in a Cell hasn't even happened yet, and yet we still <laughs> they're talking about Survivor Series already. Yeah. They're basically <laughs> bypassing Hell in a Cell. Yeah. And so we'll have our predictions podcast later on this week, hopefully by Friday for you guys. Other than that, let's get into our show. Um, crazy week this week. Actually, Not more really. of like a dump fire, dumpster fire week. Crazy That's going to be like fire. word of the podcast this week is dumpster fire. <laughs> um, but we'll start off the show as always, as we always do. Your tweets out there. And we'll start off with the raw tweets. And we'll start off with none other than the man. You love so good to me. Oh. That's right, the man, and that man is Michael Chow, our number one fan. Oh, that theme. <laughs> it always gets me. <laughs> so funny. It's like the perfect theme we picked for. My lord. Yep. So we got into his raw tweets for this week, ladies and gentlemen. He puts, Raw was a thumbs down. Three out of ten. Lesnar comes to his hometown, says nothing, and leaves. This is seriously WWE's second highest paid wrestler. What the fuck? Pros, Axel Mania returns. Sheamus brings shame to new to the New Day. <laughs> and the list of Jericho becomes Superstar of the Year. <laughs> Khan, Bailey, and Dana Brooks' worst match ever. If you can even call that a match. Heel Foley tries to cancel the woman's hell in the cell. And Lesnar walks out on his hometown. <laughs> so true. <laughs> Question, he put. Will Goldberg get booed at Survivor Series in Canada since Bret Hart has said Goldberg was the cause of his retirement? Oh, interesting question. You know what? I don't think he's going to get booed. I think people are going to forget that just for the nostalgia of Goldberg coming back after 12 years and, you know, having his final match uh, for his kid and for his wife and, and getting the finally the rematch with Brock Lesnar and hoping it's not a dumpster fire like, you know... The, the match at WrestleMania 20. He only got booed because it was in Lesnar's hometown. That was the only reason why. Yeah. So, good question. And we actually think he won't get booed, Michael no. Chow. So, yeah. Next set of tweets comes from Irrelevance at Forlorn on Twitter. He puts, I fell asleep during Raw. I picked up where I left off and I saw some bullshit. Just like before, I fell asleep. Horrible Raw. The pros, Curtis Hawkins. <laughs> Curtis Hawkins. <laughs> But Curtis Hawkins, that simple Paul Heyman segment, I can see when 
<laughs> where it went over your heads, which is mind boggling. And the Brian Kendrick TJ segment was highly interesting. Everything else was shit. Fully needs to go. Men spoke lies during that segment. Men tried to hype the shit up. Ain't working. Shit raw. Shittier than last week. Three out of ten. I'm going to go back to bed. <laughs> interesting tweets as always irrelevant he also just put uh he just realized i said curtis hawkins god i meant curtis axel i'm gonna lay back down now raw was still shit <laughs> uh next set of tweets comes from greg on tour at greg messy on twitter but just awful booking from start to finish a brock segment that went nowhere anderson made look like a joke again did the did find the chris jericho backstage stuff pretty funny especially with Jinder Mahal gave Raw a 3 out of 10. So, wow, that's three straight people giving Raw. You know, I agree with Ollie with that rating. That is the perfect rating for this Raw this week. Perfect 10 rating. Mm, God, don't even compare that to the Raw this week. Next set of tweets comes from xgillies929 on Twitter. Glorious Craig, he's now put, uh, or wants to be referred to as. He puts, Raw was not very interesting to me this week. Aside from the New Day and Sasha and Charlotte, the rest of the show felt bland. And I like the cruiserweight match between Swan and Kendrick. But Golden Truth, Titus, the Shining Stars, and Mark Henry, like, why are they on TV? And Cesaro and Sheamus look to be working good as a team. My rating for Raw this week is a 3.5 out of 10. Oh, Gillies gives it the corporate .5 extra. <laughs> interesting, interesting. Uh, we had a tweet from Gam about Raw. He puts, damn, I guess he couldn't watch it, but he put, damn, I can't wait to watch Raw in SmackDown tomorrow. Dot, 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 sarcasm. <laughs> Great, you didn't you missed the dumpster fire of a segment anyway, so good thing you missed that. So, next set of tweets is our uh, SD Live, the blue brand tweets. And we'll start off with Michael Chow as well. SmackDown, he puts thumbs up, 5 out of 10. One of the better SmackDown shows they've had compared to previous and compared to Raw's dumpster fire show, so he agrees with me. Again, guys, the word of the podcast is dumpster fire. Tweet us at hashtag dump fire. Dump fire. Or, uh, <laughs> dumpster, dumpster fire. Dumpster fire. Dumpster fire. <laughs> dump fire almost sounds like doubt fire. Doubt fire. Your favorite movie of all time. It is. Uh, wow. That's. Uh, Gamma chimed in on that 5 out of 10 tweet. He, he replied to him, but wow, that's bad, though. When 5 out of 10 is better than Raw and the show SmackDown has had recently, I just started watching Raw, I guess, when he read that tweet. Uh, pros Michael Chow say Alexa adds color to Becky's life. Nikki borrows her boyfriend's part-time finisher. <laughs> and Ellsworth jobber kicks Dean's future. <laughs> oh, man. His plugs are always good, man. They I love are. it. Cons Orton follows the buzzards to loser town. Two paws wastes one of its nine lives on Natalia's career. <laughs> and too many repeated feuds. 100% agree with that. Oh. Uh, his question, do you think the Cruiserweights will wrestle outside their division? I can picture TJ Perkins as the U.S. champ. Hmm. I mean, that'd be a good idea. I mean, Neville, who's clearly a Cruiserweight, is wrestling outside the division. I mean, he was wrestling outside it before there was even a Cruiserweight division. But I can see that happening. If Neville can wrestle outside it, why can't TJ Perkins? Yeah, I don't think they should be limited to just that. Yeah, well, we'll see. It's a we'll see kind of thing, Michael Chow. We'll see. <laughs> Um, next set of tweets for SmackDown Irrelevance at Forlorn he puts 6 out of 10 no more baby face Orton just an an, an predictable one that I always loved uh, and SmackDown is starting to build towards Survivor Series Becky and Alexis feud is so much better than Sasha and Charlotte flares SmackDown has women who make the title their world while Raw's women's ship is lost and it's all about making history and revolutions what also bother me is if is if Becky is defending her title at Survivor Series. If not, then why is Nikki captain? Solid show. Unpredictable Orton is best. Orton get him to trust you and he stabs you in the back. I hope that's what they're doing with him. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. So, I think I have a review from Gam. I think he uh, sent me one. <laughs> yeah, right here. After watching Raw and SmackDown, my review: Raw three TNAs. SmackDown 1.5 TNAs. TNAs. <laughs> I guess he's referring to TNAs as stars. <laughs> SmackDown wins just barely no chin music. <laughs> oh. SmackDown was a lot better, but yeah, it was. He also uh, t- 
told us that. So apparently Summer Rae has a neck injury and Eva Marie is filming a movie. So it explains where they've been. Sucks for Summer Rae. Who gives a shit about Eva Marie? Literally, okay, she can film movies all she wants. Just Yeah, movies. 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 We know what kind of movies. Are they ad- adult movies by any chance? Jeez, <laughs> Anyways, those are your tweets, ladies and gentlemen. We love them as always. Love that you guys have been keeping them short, and we love to discuss them and uh, talk about them on the show. So keep sending us your tweets every week, ladies and gentlemen. And keep, thanks for listening, as always. As we now have reached, speaking of Twitter, 200 followers on Twitter. Yay. We like, we much appreciated. Uh, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's a big accomplish here at No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. Is we don't know how popular, we don't know how we became so popular, but we love to provide our uh, our shows for you and our our reactions Here's and, and discussions. More. We love it. We do this as a hobby, and we love that you guys tune in. Yep. So, move on to the second part of the show: the Luke Gallows polls. That's right. Welcome to the second part of the show. The Luke Gallows Poll is our Twitter poll segment brought to you by our boys at FunWWE Polls on Twitter. Go check them out, guys. They do some serious polls, some funny polls, all polls for your liking where you can interact with them. And, you know, just interact with them, man. They have some great polls on there. Go go check them out at FunWWE Polls. And this segment is always hosted by our very own Corporate Cappy. Take it away. Hopefully it goes better than what... Luke Gallows and Anderson have been doing of late. <laughs> little corporate plug there. <laughs> oh my god. You almost made me choke on that one. Yeah. Like they've been choking. So Woo-hoo! let's start off we got do you watch NXT? Yes, no, or only takeovers? Mm. I want to keep watching. I want to like I watch here and there. I my watch, my yeah, answer would be here this. and there. I'm really into the, the um, Ty Dillinger and Bobby Roode thing for obvious reasons. Yeah. But um, I'd say Sometimes. So, uh, yes, one with 44%. No, and only takeovers tied with 28. Mm. No, hey, that's, assume, that's probably the casuals. I'm going to assume you're all Roman Reigns fans for the no people. <laughs> uh, next, this is a good pool. Will Chris Jericho win the Universal Championship before he retires? Yes or no? Ooh, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes, I'm going to say at least once. It might be a short reign. But uh, I think at least once he wins. I think the he will too. I think fifty five percent said yes. Forty five no. You guys suck. Mm. But I think that he will. That's because a tough pull. He he's so money right now that I think they have to give him the title at some point. Yeah. Especially with his whole list thing. Jesus. Uh, it's so of, over. Speaking of Luke Gallows polls, have WWE dropped the ball on Gallows and Anderson so far in their WWE run? Yes. Yes. Hundred no? percent. That should have won like a lot. It eighty four percent. Yeah, yes. they they they've literally shit the bed with like trying to push these guys and make them relevant. The people not know how big they were in New Japan. Like they're huge. God, and you can you, you think about it, right? Luke Gallows. He goes from being fucking Festus and like the worst thing I've ever seen on TV <laughs> to going to New Japan, and becoming the most popular thing ever with the IWC. With the, insane, yeah. With the whole Bullet Club thing, and it was really hot coming in. Yeah, and then they just fallen off the face of the earth. I thought they would continue with the whole Dana Brooke manager thing. I think people would have gotten behind that too, but I guess not. I, I think they need Styles, and like we were saying, a Survivor Series, the team does get three superstars. I think they should take the club to SmackDown and put them with Styles yeah. again. Yeah, if the three people, if SmackDown wins, if this rumor ends up being true, they need to take Cesaro with the club, have the club go to SmackDown, be relevant again, and they're going to add another tag team to that division. And then, you know, be behind AJ Styles. Like, AJ Styles still wears club logos and stuff. Like, maybe that's what they're going to do. Yeah, maybe AJ Styles is going to say, you know what, Daniel, I'm tired of your shit. I want my guys back. You yeah. Know? Um, which one of these Hell in a Cell matches should you <laughs> should be the main event? We're going to talk about wow. this in our Hell in a Cell podcast. Yeah. So we've got Owens versus Rollins, Reigns versus Rusev, and Sasha Banks versus Charlotte. Sasha Banks versus Charlotte. 60% for Sasha yeah, Banks right. versus Charlotte. Yeah, right. Good. 36 for Owens Rollins and 4% for <laughs> exactly. Reigns. Exactly. Okay, to you 4%, that's the 4% of Roman Reigns' fans right there, obviously, and if there's any Rusev and fans. And Babushka fans. The fans of Babushka voted for that. I want my grandson to be in main event. I want ba- ba- this Babushka talking. Vince, you listen to Babushka. But yes, th- we've are, we're going to rant about this in the Hell in a Cell podcast, but yeah. 100% the women should be the main event since it is the first ever yeah. Women 100%. 100% should be Sasha and Charlotte. No, without a shadow of a doubt, bottom line, that's it. 
Because Kyle Masters said so. Because Kyle Masters said so. Uh, which one of these superstars has a brighter WWE future, Bo Dallas or Curtis Axel? Hmm. I mean, so far out of the last two weeks, Curtis Axel has been showing that he's got, you know, he's, it looks like he's getting it back. But Bo Dallas, I'd vote Bo Dallas because he's been strong ever since. Like he goes from being drunk at an airport to what he has now, and he, he's getting old. He's not getting over, but he's looking better day by day. I think people won't get bored of him. I think people are starting to turn their attention to Bo Dallas yeah. finally. So I think I'd say Bo Dallas. Curtis Axel, fifty-five percent. Wow. See, I would vote Curtis Axel because I think he has a lot to. Because those fifty-five percent well. don't. Believe in Bo. Uh, not, I don't believe in Bo, but you I have to I'm, believe in Bo. But I think Curtis Axel. I believe in future. Bo. Oh, L- we'll let us know either who believes in Bo. Let us know. I don't. Uh, what was your opinion of this week's episode of Raw? Excellent, above average, average, or below average? Below, at way below average, way, way, I way, guess way down. Getting away from the great, good, okay, and terrible thing. So yeah. it's now excellent, above average, average, below average, and below average, forty-one percent. Only forty-one. Average said thirty-five. Ten percent said excellent. Who? <laughs> How do you think that's excellent? <laughs> <laughs> probably fucking shining star fans. That's probably why uh, they lost. We'll well, get it sucks that for them. That's, that's our main event of them. I can't wait to talk about that match. Uh, what's your opinion of this week's episode of SmackDown Live? Excellent, above average, average, or below average? Uh, I'd say it was average. To me, I'd say average. Excellent, 40%. Wow. And it wasn't a, even that great. They've had better SmackDown. I, I think it's because Raw was so bad that it made SmackDown look like mm. so much Yeah, better. I know, but I expected if it, I'd only vote above average if SmackDown went over the top and they didn't. It was okay, they're, so they're, I'd they're, say average. They're riding at okay right now, you know? I mean, I guess it showed that they didn't really need to put out a good they product did. for them to beat Raw this week. They Again, did. that's happened already yeah. before. They did better. The last two weeks for SmackDown have been really bad. Yeah. But this week, I think they finally like gotten back up to the, to, yeah. uh, I don't know, the mediocre, <laughs> the, the mediocre average level. level. <laughs> so, excellent 40, ab- above average 38, below average only 5%. So, Wow. Okay. Yep. And which one of these programs won this week, Raw or SmackDown? SmackDown. <laughs> SmackDown, eighty-six percent. Oh, okay. Hold up. Only eighty-six. I have to say that only. So fourteen percent said yes on for Raw because they probably didn't watch SmackDown. <sighs> you guys gotta tune in. It's the blue brand. It's actually it was way better this week. <laughs> so we've got two polls left. Which one of these superstars is the best heel woman in the division? Charlotte, Dana Brooke, Alexa Bliss, or Carmella? Yeah, I'd say Alexa Bliss. I just because uh, it's a make, it's a tie between Charlotte and Alexa Bliss. I'd say. See, I voted for Charlotte, and I think I put Char. I think I, my vote gave Charlotte the winner, forty-seven percent to forty-six percent. Wow, forty-seven for Charlotte, forty-six. How, for how much did my girl Carmella get? Six. Come on. And Dana got one percent. <laughs> okay, fuck Dana Brooke. But like, how does Carmella only get six percent? She's been ripping apart Nikki for like the last two weeks. Two weeks? We're like two months. Two months. Yeah, but like lately, it's been like ferocious. Like she's been a savage. Oh, oh man, I love Baymella. I, I think it should have been a lot closer yeah, than six. I'm sad that says only six. I, I think I think Carmella's heel run is underrated you right people now. Out there. Come on, guys. Really Whoever's listening to this podcast right now, get into those polls and help us out here so we don't have to freaking rant about how bad the poll Her is. promo last week was great yeah. with uh, with Nikki. But, I mean, oh, as I'm talking to you right now, it's gone to 46 each now. Oh, and wow. Carmella got That's an extra lot. vote. Yeah! <laughs> Baymella! <laughs> Love it. This poll is still going, so I think you guys are listening right now. I went and voted for Carmella. Thank you. Thank you. Whoever so, did that, I appreciate it. I, I agree that Charlotte – I think Charlotte's be- the better heel right now right now because she's more established as, as a he- top heel. Mm-hmm. I think Alexa's getting there. Not yeah. just not there yet as the top. She's getting there, though. She's getting there. I, I like her work she's we doing. All, we all know my feelings on this. Sasha should be the top heel, but she's yeah. not a heel. Yeah, she's a face. Stupid. And last poll – Will Billy Corgan get control of TNA Impact from Dixie Carter? Yes or no? Yes. Because Dixie Carter has zero dollars in the bank account. <laughs> yes, 50%. No, 50%. <laughs> I, I you know how you can be on the fence because I really don't give a fuck. Just end this whole shit. Sell the company. Just end it, man. Just, it's getting annoying, really. <laughs> God. I didn't think it would last this long. And we're... Uh, I don't think we're going to have headlines this week, are we? Mm, 
Not really. So no, we I don't might have well any just news. talk about TNA yeah. real quick. They got sued again. Again. Once again. And they owe is it an insurance company and they uh it was like four hundred thousand dollars they owed and they were paying it all off uh over each month. It was like eleven or twelve thousand a month. And as of now they still owe two hundred and something thousand dollars. So on top of their airline expenses and on top of what they're being sued for more, let's just add another two hundred thousand dollars to <laughs> the expense list like they just call it quits dixie get the bankruptcy just call already it man heard that the talent wants to walk out and like threaten to leave they don't get paid the, the now the tapings are being delayed because of this so like how how are their superstars ever going to get paid and they're going to pay off all these lawsuits i don't know it, it's done it's already literally it's like i've said before tna's in its coffin it's in the grave and literally we're we're piling the dirt on it now and you can see just a little tip of the coffin left it's just and he's two more scoops of that dirt, and then, you know, like, rest in peace. <laughs> bye bye, TNA forever. When that uh, thing does happen, you know, The Undertaker will yeah. be there to say it. <laughs> rest in peace. <laughs> God. I guarantee that's something Vince would do, too. Like, they'd show up at, like, TNA's, like, headquarters. And, like, Can you happen. imagine? I've bought my competition once again. <laughs> Undertaker's just there. Yeah. Rest in peace, <laughs> TNA. Oh, man. Speaking of Undertaker, that's one piece of news we can talk about. Oh, yeah. Undertaker was, showed himself at a Cleveland Cavaliers game. For the opening of their of their inaugural championship season. Now, I understand Banner that rating. he's there because they refer to someone on the team as Ankle Taker. I don't know who it is. Because I don't care about basketball. Because I don't give a shit about basketball. Sorry but guys like basketball. he was there, and he looked good. He, and he wasn't on crutches. That's another plus. So, if the dream match that I really want to happen next year's WrestleMania, it looks good for it. John Cena, Undertaker. I hope this happens. He looks good though. He's got long hair too, like like his long black hair he used to have. He looks good. Looks good. I don't understand why he'd be at the Cavs game. Looks like the championship. If anything, he should be at the Browns game because yeah. they're zero and seven. They're going <laughs> to the grave. Uh, but he looks good though. Yeah, like he had his like singlet on. You can see it through. He looks like he's still in shape. I love it, Undertaker man. Good. One more match, just one more with John Cena. That's all we want to see. Then you can ride off into the sunset. Ain't Maybe no have some network specials or whatever. Can hold my body down. <laughs> God. Anyways, into the raw slash dumpster fire review. Can we get crickets? Hashtag dumpster fire. Do we have uh, a cricket. I don't know if I have the cricket sound on here. Nope, we don't have it. We'll have to add it some other time, but uh, nope. Yeah, the crickets. Yep. I don't know. I can't. I can't do it. I can't. I was gonna attempt at making a cricket sound, but I don't think Raw even deserves me trying to do a cricket sound. After last week with the hype with Goldberg, and then yeah. they come out with this it was shit. the the best show they've had in in months. Last week, they come out with a pure dumpster fire of a Raw for this week, as their go home show for their pay per view that they're supposed to sell for. <laughs> it was just garbage. They had a cruiserweight match on Superstars, a show that's not shown on TV until Friday where no one gives a fuck about. It's on the network from like 8 to 9. Like, who's watching WWE? On a Friday Friday night. Perfect placement for Superstars. Perfect. You guys are geniuses. They even had my boy Cedric Alexander on Superstars. I know they had the cruiserweight match on Raw, but they could have had two. No, no, no. We put it on Superstars. What a way to put it. Screw you, Vince. It was also announced on Raw that Hell in a Cell has been changed to a triple main event. This is probably the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Are you fucking kidding me? A triple main event? After they were just hyping the women being the main event, and then they're like, no, we got, we can't do that. We can't have the women end the show. This we is Vince, this is Vince talking 100%. I guarantee you this is Vince talking. No, you know, we, we can't have tri- we can't have the women main event Raw's or Hell in a Cell. This is not right. How, oh, hey, good idea. Let's make three main events. Yeah, yeah. Whoever doesn't like it can be fire. Uh, I want Roman and... Oh, Roman, Roman Reigns. Oh, over. yeah, I love Roman Reigns. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking stupid. So dumb. Triple... Uh, the fuck is a triple main event? They want to make it sound like triple main event. Ooh, Whoa, ooh. Oh, biggest pay Like, so <laughs> stupid. Okay, no, Vince, this is what you do. You put Kevin Owens and Seth Rollins to open the show, just like Backlash opened with the title. Mid card, you put Rusev and Roman Reigns. Have a cooldown match before the woman and have the woman main event. For once, stop putting your fucking ego in the way and just have the woman main event this pay per view. It's not a big four pay per view. Okay? We're not ruining anything. It's a hell in a cell pay per view that's like, what, five, six years old, this pay per view? 
Like, come and on. It's the first ever match. And it's the first ever Women's Hell in Cell. You can't put your ego aside to have this the main event. You've got to be kidding me. Unbelievable. This is inexcusable. People out there that don't like the women, or that say that the women aren't even close to being as good of a draw. No, they're probably happy. They're probably been rolling around going, yes, yeah. yes, we're going to see Rusev, Roman Reigns, the main event. Yeah. I hope you guys are happy about that. Yeah. But we're not here at No Holds Bar. We are pissed off, and we have a lot of people that agree I am with us. blissed off. About He's this. blissed off about it, even though she's not even going to be a hell in a cell. He's blissed off about it, ladies and gentlemen. He's pissed off. My this, bl- is this is my blissed off moment of the week. We're going to make a new. <laughs> We're gonna have a new segment every week. Blissed off moment My of the week. Blissed off moment of the week, and, and this is it. This <laughs> right here. This triple main event garbage. Oh, uh, it's stupid. Triple. Like the fuck is that? Triple main event. Why can't you just the poster is both Charlotte and Sasha? <laughs> but that's not the main event. They probably changed. Maybe the poster. we don't even know where they're gonna be on the card. They probably changed the poster. They probably put them at the bottom of the poster. Roman Reigns is like right at the top. Oh my Was god. <laughs> This is fucking god off. This is stupid. Like how many times have we seen Roman Reigns headline a pay per view? Why did, can't he just take a back seat for once? No, no, he's got to be the guy, the guy that gets booed by every city he goes to. Oh my god, in Boston, it's, he's gonna get booed so Rusev bad. Rusev will be the face in it's Boston. It's gonna be awful. Anyways, moving let's in. get into Raw. Yeah. This dumb tire, b- let's dumpster get this fire of a show. Let's get this. Actually move yeah. to SmackDown here. Anyways, so we'll start off Enzo and Cass over as fuck, one hundred percent. Don't know why these guys don't get pushed as an over team. They had they come out with the deal of promo. They get interrupted by the club who turn off their microphone. But then they had they're like we don't need mics. They had the entire crowd do their entire promo from start to finish with them. And Enzo has a mic tattooed on his hand, which is clever. Unbelievable. Okay, how do you? The people out there think Enzo and Cass or thought they would never make it. Fuck you for one. Because I this proves right there how over they are. To this day, they debuted after WrestleMania into now. Their crowd is still doing their entire promo. Okay, and where were they? Where were they in Minneapolis? Out of all places, they weren't even in a popular city that they like to go to where they get the most reaction. They had the entire crowd do their promo, yet they get pushed aside with the club and say, "We don't give a fuck about these guys." They're they're different. You know what I mean? They're not a team that we've seen before like that. I don't understand why WWE doesn't see the, see the uniqueness that they have. Yeah. To pu- actually give someone different a push. They would be perfect tag team champions. They deserve it. They didn't win the NXT one. I don't know for what reason why they never won the NXT but tag I think, titles. I think them being so over is a problem right now because WWE feels that they're going to be over regardless if they have Well, the if they're not, not over, they're going to end up like Golden Truth and Shining Stars. They're not over and look where they are. They slipped down to the jobber card. I don't want that to happen to these but two. But I think, I think WWE's taking advantage of them being over to the fact that they don't need the titles because they don't need to be over. <sighs> I hope titles. not. But anyways, neither does New Day, really. If you think yeah, about it, New I know. Day they don't really need, need the titles, titles either. So that's why I'm scared that they might lose it to Cesaro and Sheamus because they need something. <laughs> um, the match, Enzo faces Carl Anderson one-on-one. Anderson loses again. Anderson loses again. So Anderson, it's this, this club situation that we com- we complain about, it's gotten worse. I know I feel bad and like I'm saying like I love Enzo and Casp and it's good that they got the win over the club because that's pretty good. But they got to stop making the club lose. It's always Carl Anderson that loses. <laughs> I feel so bad for the guy. He's so good. He's actually a great wrestler, but he just gets job to side. Luke Gallows somehow yeah. always gets away with not getting... <laughs> yeah, and but I mean, Enzo won with it by distraction. Yeah, let's, let's be real here. He, he didn't win clean. <laughs> Enzo and, or Cass got his big boot while the ref was distracted by Luke Gallows. <laughs> yeah. But I love, I love the Michael Chow tweet. And he says, could the club cancel the Golden Truth sing-along as well? <laughs> I would love that, please, Michael Chow. I 100 percent agree with you. you. Gotta, no, you stop it. Down with the brown. Already. Whatever they can have their song, just get the sing along crap off the TV. I feel like I'm watching Barney. The fuck is that? <laughs> Especially when they have Goldust's head going. Yeah, around like that's just gar. Oh, I know it's for the kids, but come on, stop it, stop it. Let's be real here. 90 percent of the people that watch wrestling right now are over the year over the age of 18 and don't want to see that on the TV. I love when you were, when you, they came back from commercial and Gullis was like shaking and shit. You're like, "What is he doing?" <laughs> I just nah, we'll talk about that when we get to it. But anyways, Enzo and Cass looks like they're probably going to face the club at Hell in the Cell, probably in the pre-show. We'll talk about that in the pre-show predictions. Moving on, uh to the it was basically the main topic all of Raw from start to finish. We had the missing list of Jericho. <laughs> this opened the show. It's basically yeah. So we have we, the list was the list is face, is basically missing. Someone stole it from Chris Jericho. 
He comes out and he's all distraught, saying that he lost his list, all this crap. And KO comes out. Yeah. And he said he's not going to be. Chris Jericho was saying he's not going to be in the match if he didn't, until he finds the list. Owens, there you see more deception. Owens like, I don't care about your stupid list. And, oh. I care about the, the match. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. And yeah. then they say, just bring his list out. And then Steph comes out and Mick Foley. And oh god, they're all in the ring, wondering what the fuck's going on with the list. And then Seth Rollins comes out. Beautiful. Rollins has he's the got list the list in his, his arm, hand. Behind his hand. <laughs> they played. Oh, it's just. Yeah, it was. It was good at first, and it just started again. It, the dumpster fire was starting to get lit at the, the halfway through the segment. I'm like, oh my god, just get, just end this segment already. Like yeah, it's just sparkle useless. Crotch thing again. Crowd chant and sparkle. Yeah, crotch. that's gonna stay with Jericho for a while. <laughs> but like I, like I always say, like I've been saying the last couple weeks, the title is being overshadowed by Jericho in the list, and yeah. I think it should. And be this focused. Raw, literally, this is the go home for Raw. And you made it more about Jericho on his list than the actual title itself. That's what I'm saying. They're not building Owens versus Rollins as a match as much as they're building Jericho. Yeah. And that sucks. I love my boy Kevin Owens. He's my boy. I can't, like, but I can't I, get I behind like There hasn't been enough heat between him and Rollins one-on-one. It's been, like, Jericho in the middle of it yeah. with all this list shit. Which, yeah. I mean, as much as we love the list and we think that Jericho is doing some of the best work he's ever done in his career, yeah. if it's supposed to be a title match between those two guys, he shouldn't be... Like the main focus of it, exactly. Unless he's going to be in the match, which he's exactly. not going to be now, which we'll find out later. Yeah. So all of Raw, he's just he's been backstage looking for this list. He went through the locker room. There's the one point where he went with with Titus O'Neil in there, and then the star, shining stars, shining stars were like, "No, we have this timeshare for." He's like, "I don't, I hate the Dominican." I hate the throws the pants. Yeah, that was funny. I'll admit that was funny. He's like Titus O'Neil. He's like, "Hey, nice scarf." He's like, "Yeah, it's Titus brand." He's like, "Yeah, dummy brand." <laughs> and he gets the Jinder Mahal. Jinder Mahal trying to teach him breathing exercises, yeah. and he's like, "Stupid idiot! idiot. Stupid, stupid idiot! <laughs> stupid idiot! Stupid idiot!" <laughs> that was great. Okay, okay. Um, for comic relief for the show, that was perfect. Yeah, and he t- tells oh, Steph man. backstage about how you know he needs to find his list, or they're not getting a main event tonight. And yeah. Steph says, "Who do you think you're talking to? You're talking to your boss? What do you do? Put me on the list again?" Chris is like, "I never had you on the list, list. Steph. You, you know, worry. he she is on there." <laughs> We've seen the list. Yeah. She's on there. So about three quarters down of the show, we actually find it. And who the hell has it? Fucking Braun Strowman. Just standing there randomly. Are you kidding me? Really? Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman just standing there. This is where it gets worse from here. Jericho walks up. He's like, oh, great. He's like, Can, hi. Can I have my list? This is the words that come out of Braun Strowman's mouth next. I'm like... Okay, that just ruined his whole character. Say please. Say, and then the worst part of that entire thing, Jericho says please, and he gives it back to him. And he's like, I don't Seriously? see Sami Zayn's name on this list. No struggle, no push, no shove. I no. Guess the, why don't you just like rip the the list in half at least, or do something with the board, or break it? But he, he they are both heels though. But he just like gives him and walks away. What the hell? Our, our, uh, for, that made Braun Strowman look like a pussy. Our former co-host No Cell Phil tweeted, uh, Braun Strowman, the easiest final boss in history. <laughs> That's so bad. I see what he's saying, too. It's stupid. I was re- That was just poorly, poorly booked. I forget who said how bo- bad it was booked. That was poorly booked. And I feel bad. You know, I kind of feel bad for you Braun Strowman fans out there. Hint, hint our to boy, the people you know. Tyler Jones. Tyler Jones, at, mainly. At Tyler Jones 22. I feel bad for him. Because he wants to get behind Braun Strowman. I understand what he's coming from. He's, he's he, this he, big, opposing, larger-than-life figure. Yeah. He's but then when you do something like that and make him look that weak, how can you honestly – how can I sit there and be like, okay, I love Braun Strowman. I can get behind that. I would have loved it if you took it and like broke the list in half, did something with it, and, and then throw the, it at him. That would have gotten Strowman so much heat if he would have broke yeah. the list. If he would have ripped the list in half, like, he would have got so uh, much heat. I just don't understand. They missed these opportunities. Golden, Like, who's writing this shit? God. Clearly, Jericho should be writing it because then after Strowman gives it back to him, he says, Zane's actually on page four. And guess what, Strowman? You, you just made the list. Property. You just made the list. And like, huge pop. When Yeah, and then I'm like, I'm way okay. Is Strowman going to come back and go, what? And no, just that's it. End of segment. Awful. They could have done so much more <sighs> with that. I, I just, I'm upset with that. Anyway. So Jericho finally gets his list, so we are going to have a main event tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll get into that later. So, next. The New Day facing off against Cesaro and Sheamus. Okay. Uh, it's Big E and Kofi, so Xavier Woods is not in it. All right. Uh, no Facebook Live this week from Cesaro and Sheamus. So they're actually wrestling with you. Are you going to wrestle? And no one's going to like not wrestle or do nothing. 
Everyone's still booing Seamus. Yeah. Shame. No oh, yeah, the, shame. The promo shame. by New Day before about saying that <laughs> uh, Seamus only referred to as shame. I don't even need to tell you guys how I think how over New Day is and how bland they're not because you hear from me every week. I just love the New Day. I love them. That's it. I love them. They're shame, perfect. Shame on us for having to put up with this crap every week. <laughs> Shame! They're so, so good. So now every time he does his 10 beats of the power in, instead of doing 1, 2 to 1 to 10, they do shame. 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 <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Bro, Biggest you, surprise you like out of them all. Do you like it more because you hate Seamus or that you just love the New Day? I love it. I think it's love the New Day. But I hate Seamus just as equal as I love the New Day. <laughs> it's pretty close. <laughs> but something surprising happens in this entire match. Cesaro and Seamus win! The way they won was pretty cool. I'll admit it was a pretty good finish. Wow! So Sheamus or Kofi goes over the top yep. rope to try and hit Sheamus, and he gets an uppercut by Cesaro. Oh man, that was devastating! Yep. And My so Biggie lord! Gets distracted by Cesaro, Sheamus goes like sw- swings back in the ring and gives Biggie the bro kick. God, I f- I was shocked. I'm like, wow. Picking up the win over the tag team champions before Hell in a Cell. So making the heel team look strong going into their match at Hell in a Cell. what they should do for every yeah. team or mm-hmm. every feud. Alexa Bliss. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah, this makes it even hard to pick who's going to win. And you'll see our predictions at the Hell in a Cell predictions but podcast. I definitely think that they made Sheamus and Cesaro look like they could actually win. Even though after the match... Oh, for sure. like, I'm the only one. And then yeah. Cesaro, hey, it's almost you know? like Daniel Bryan and Kane all over yeah. again. Like, I'm the tag team champions. Oh, I'm the tag team champion. <laughs> so we, we do think Cesaro and Sheamus have a chance on something. Yeah. Tune into our predictions for what we our actual prediction will be for that. Anyways, move into something that just literally it, it, it took the wood and more fire starter that we needed to make that dumpster fire even bigger. And it just happened in this segment right here. Dana Brooke and Bailey supposed to have an actual match, a rematch. I'm like, oh fuck, okay, well, here we go. Dana Botch coming out. We're gonna have another rematch with da- with with Bailey. If Dana could just stand there all night, I could handle that. <laughs> um, and not flex. Yeah, don't <laughs> please, because she looks like a man when she flexes. Mm. But she looks. I saw on Twitter people mentioned she looks thick when she's out there tonight. Like she couldn't fit into her pants thick. Like she's getting a little chub. Uh, Dana Brooke. Been getting to the buffet table a little bit too much. Playtime is over. Playtime is over. Food time is over. I still love you, Dana. Don't worry. <laughs> Anyways, um, what in the actual fuck she did says, we see? I got a rematch from Mick Foley, but it's an arm wrestling match. So Are Bailey you? comes out, okay. and they bring the, the big, the stupid table in Are the you ring. fucking kidding me? An arm... What? People were so mad. The crowd! You know, it was bad of a segment when the crowd chanted boring and we want wrestling. That's when you know, Vince and whoever's writing this shit backstage, that you just created an even more dumpster fire of a segment to add to the already dumpster fire show. This was the stupidest fucking thing I've ever seen. And Bailey's right arm is hurting. She's playing. And it's just like just smashing arm like on. I mean, yeah, this is so predictable. This is just bullshit. Yeah, they use the other arm and Bailey like almost wins. And then the typical arm wrestling thing where... Dana will kick her under the table and this start was the her up. worst segment ever. But the worst part of it was that she she like threw Bailey onto the top of the uh, like gave her a head spot off yeah. the, the top of the the table. But the table was padding, so it shouldn't have even uh, hurt. I don't understand. I mean, I thought nothing was worse than the Jobbers match, but I guess we were wrong. According to Michael Chow, it was according to him. Yeah, we were wrong. This was worse than a jobber. I would have loved to seen a jobber match with Bailey and some random jobber than that shit they put on TV. I would have loved to switch to whatever fucking sh- t- TV station that TNA is on now and seen a blank screen because there's nothing on it now. Then watch whatever I just watched for 15 minutes. Well, I mean, I, I, I get to see Dana Brooke and Bailey in the ring. I mean, I'll take that. I would. Lo- I love that too, but that was bullshit. I want to see Bailey wrestle. They have her face a jobber and then have two crappy matches with Dana Brooke. Okay, one crappy this match. Is and retar- this is retarded. I feel segment. so bad for people like Dana Brooke and Bailey who have potential. So, sort of. Dana Brooke needs to go without some Bailey conditioning. Bailey has a lot more potential than but, Dana Brooke does. For a girl like Bailey, have that much potential and she gets put through this crap. But they literally have no one else unless they want to give her, unless they want to feed her to Nia Where's Jax. Nia Jax? So Where they, is but she? They, do they want to feed Bailey to Nia Jax, though? Uh, they can bring That's someone else up. Bring someone up. Where's, uh. 
What else did they draw? Alicia Fox. Oh, I think she's dead. I don't know. I don't know where the hell she went. Oh, she was on Superstars last yeah. week facing... Debut right? Emma already. She's ready to come back. Why hasn't she debuted yet? And she's going to be on SmackDown. Oh, my God. I just don't know. I don't know. I don't, the I don't women's know. division on Raw... Is slowly is slipping down the slide. Whatever. Besides the title... Match, they just focus on two people. That's all they you do. You can't even call it a division. It's the Sasha and Charlotte division. division. <laughs> Literally. Oh my god, it's just god awful and it's dumpster fire. More just adds more to that big dumpster fire of Raw this week. So, you need to call up more women or do something. Yeah. Sign more women. Yeah. Just let's just move on. Fuck this. Let's move on. (laughs) Next, Curtis Axel versus Bo leaving Bo Dallas. Yes. Um, They showed what happened last week during Raw uh, the attack on Curtis Axel by Bo Dallas. Pretty brutal attack. Um, and Axel cuts a pretty good promo this week. He's in this his hometown week. of Minneapolis. Yep. Uh, starts talking about this. When he cuts promos like this, talking about his history and, and like the hometown and like the city itself, he can get over. Talk, he talked about his grandfather and his father. And- he can get over as hell doing this and being this character. Like being the homage of his, being the third generation superstar uh, he is. And to start out, that's how you start a legacy and you start a good career and start getting over is when you start like this and have promos like this not when he debuted with paul Heyman trying to be the next paul Heyman guy because that didn't fucking work then he comes back and they do the whole social outcast shit the axel mania was starting to get over but they they stopped that for some reason i know he was uh he was doing the whole uh macho man in uh axel mania thing with uh was it adam rose or damian sandow yeah sandow and then sandow got see you later um, but it was a really good promo by Axel. Bo Dallas comes out. They actually have a pretty decent match. Um, Bo Dallas looks good. I'm, I say it again. He looks stronger every single week. Looks like he people are starting to get more into it. Um, same with Axel. Good for him, man. He looks like he he's get. Looks like his in ring skill is uh, becoming. Maybe they're letting him showcase. A I'm ho- bit. I'm hoping that's what it is. But then Bo Dallas ends up winning. So again, to make Bo Dallas look stronger, um, it looks like this. St- it looks like they're going to bring back the streak, Bo Dallas. Because remember when he he was, uh, remember they're doing like 15 and Bo and 16 and Bo. <laughs> like it was awesome. So I think that's what they're going to do. Um, but good on both superstars here to get showcased here. So that was maybe like a, a highlight of Raw, like one of the only highlights of Raw. So I I thoroughly enjoyed this segment. <laughs> Um, I still don't believe in Bo, <laughs> but um, I hope they bring back Axel Mania. Like the crowd was chanting Axel Mania. I think Axel's he's been getting over at live events. They showed like when they went to South America and how yeah. over he was. I think they need to give Axel a somewhat of a mid card push as a face. I think he could do it. I think he'd do it too. I think it would be perfect. He'd be really. Per- I I just don't see how they don't. I, I don't understand because him- Rusev and Roman Reigns are taking over the mid card level. So, like, no one else is able to get pushed. They need another tag team on Raw. Why don't they get Ty Dillinger to come up and be oh. tag team partner with Curtis Axel? Yeah, the perfect pair. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> Anyways, we'll move on. And I'll let you talk about this next segment because I was asleep. I fell asleep. I took a nap. 15-minute nap during this. Golden Truth versus the Shining Stars once again. It was great. I thought it was a match of the night quality. Seriously? Um, no. Right. And Mark Henry and Titus O'Neil were at ringside, so apparently Titus O'Neil is like Shining Stars is I don't know what he is, but well, he's at fantastic. ringside with them. Typical Golden Truth versus Shining Stars match. And the match ends with Mark Henry and Titus getting into it on rigs at ringside. And Mark Henry kinda like shoves Titus, but and he somehow leaps up and grabs the turnbuckle, and when he does that Primo falls and hits his nuts on the oh yeah on wow. the top rope and he falls, you know the typical fall on the rope spot, and it leads to Golden Truth winning with I don't know what their finisher is called but it's like a little Jimmy but both of them do it, and that's <laughs> oh, the end. Of oh, the I'm match. sorry, what? I was asleep there. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh yeah, the Golden Truth. Oh, yeah. But the if you go back and watch the way Titus, like, I don't think I want to. It, it was so bad the way that he, Mark Henry pushed him and then he like jumped. He had to like jump to, to grab the rope. <laughs> Like why would you do that? It made no sense. That's why it's just so bad. That's so, why I'm glad I fell asleep so during Golden it. Golden Truth picks up the win. My boy Mark Henry, you know, getting in the ring after. Yeah, I guess you can get behind that. I'll give you that. But other than that, the, the dumpster this, fire hashtag dumpster fire quote of the show. This is like the bottom of the barrel every show. Yep. Tell you the shining stars are more worried about their um, timeshares than they are the Great. racing. Ability. That's why I don't think they're going to be good. 
It's going to get annoying after a while. And the whole sing-along thing with Golden Truth before. Don't even get me started on that. I've already said what I need to say. Um, let's just move on. I move on to an awkward, sort of awkward segment with the Sasha Banks and Charlotte contract signing. It started out okay, all right? But then it just got just awkward. I can't even find a word for it. It's just awkward. Foley was uncomfortable. Foley was basically like crying and like trying to take away from these women as if they can't pull off a Hell in a Cell match. It makes it seem like they're going to, you know... Like die. Pull a m- mankind off. Yeah, and jump off the cell. cell. That's not going to happen. Vince already declined that. Yeah. I mean, it was good promo by the girls. But literally, Mick Foley took everything away from this entire segment. He was ba- It was basically about him, the pro. He's like, oh, I've known you, Charlotte, since you were a little yeah. girl with your daddy. And- Mick Foley, you literally did not need to get into this promo. You need to just sit, stand back, stand on the ropes, and let these girls go at it for the contract. But then he started talking about shit that didn't, make, like, didn't have any relevancy. He started talking to Sasha. He's like, my kids gave you their signed Eddie Guerrero pictures. That's great. That. What does that have to do with Hell in a Cell? She's not going to die. This is not her funeral, it's Mick like, Foley. It's like Mick Foley was writing a eulogy for the both of them. It was just, it was, like, it was stupid. It was just plain awkward. Like, I don't know what I was watching. Like, like, I understand Foley needed to make it sound intense. Like, it, it like. But you went overboard. Match, There's but, a line where yeah. he had to stop at, and he went literally like a hundred feet over that line. Like, it was just garbage. I hated that. They could have done so much better it was with to this be segment. between them two. And again, WWE makes it about someone else instead yeah, of them. Exactly. It's ret- like, I appreciate it's pathetic. It. What Mick Foley's done in the Hell in a Cell, and nobody knows he didn't need to jump like in him, here. but he didn't need to. He did not go need to, to be that here. level. I don't need think. to stand back, sit in the corner, and shut up, Mick Foley, and let these girls go at it. As, and it would have been a better segment. As for the promo, I thought Charlotte was pure gold in this yeah. promo. She's such a good heel. I think she, she should just stay healed the rest of her career. She's I, the ultra ultra heel. I think people are finally starting to realize how good of a heel Charlotte is, and I'm one of those people. Like yeah. I, I don't like Charlotte obviously because she's feuded with my girl Sasha, but. I, I'm starting to respect Charlotte a lot yeah. more for what she does as a heel. I think her mic work is just incredible as a heel. Like, she's perfect. She was terrible when she was a face. Oh, daddy. Me, me, me. No, no. Get that crap now out that, of here. Now that she's got Ric Flair out of the and, picture, she's her own person. Yeah. She's making her own legacy, yeah. which is great. And and I know you agree, too. Like, I say the same thing with Sasha Banks. She's just not a good face. No. She's way better as a heel. But the problem is the crowd is cheering for yeah. her right and now. And there's no, there's no one to, for her to... If she goes heel... There's Babe, no one else. It. Bailey, that's it. But then who's Charlotte going to see? Exactly. Like, Nia Jax? Like- <laughs> Dana Brooke, we, already, we don't want to see that. They need more <laughs> women, man. So I guess we're probably just going to, they're going to stay like this. And they're going to, I think they're just going to keep feuding until they get more women. But, uh, and it's, it, in a way, it's good because they'll be, they'll get enough uh, attention and they'll build the feud so good that it'll be in the same category as like Lita and Trish and it'll be up there with like the next great that's feud that's what they want Charlotte and Sasha to do but I feel like they're just doing it too much now and we're gonna get it's gonna get yeah, stale it's eventually stale. it's gotta die off and then rebirth itself just like Trish and Lita it died off and then rebirthed itself yeah so but um great job by Charlotte uh Sasha's promos are getting stale yeah uh like I can say that as, as a diehard Sasha fan but um I think Sh- Charlotte her pay-per-view streak i forgot about that yeah i know that's right it's on the line too this this is that's why this match is going to be so good on sunday and i write this is why it should be the main event (laughs) but no of course not we don't watch we don't really know for sure so we'll have to see so i give it a thumbs up for charlotte thumbs Mm. middle for sasha and thumbs down for mick foley (laughs) i can't even give i can't even give mick foley the respect of getting a thumbs down because that was just he didn't need to be there it was it was pure garbage for me. I understood why he was there. He just didn't need to put as much input as he did in yeah. the promo. Okay, I understand he needed to be standing there, but no, just an easy word. Just introduce them and that's it. So, we'll move on. Braun Strowman. Oh. For the first time since his debut, no jobbers. <coughs> no jobbers. Yes. Can you believe that, Corbin Cappy? No nope. jobbers. Coughing out here. But, we got no match. Great. Sami Zayn comes out. He's supposed to have a match with Sami Zayn. But the brawl that they have with each other after just ends up leading to Strowman running or, I guess, walking away. He he goes up. He looks at Sami Zayn, grabs a microphone and says, Foley, I don't know if I made myself clear when I said I wanted some competition. Ooh. And as he's looking away, Sami Zayn gives him like a drop kick and it like startles Strowman and then Strowman chases him around the ring. He gets back in the ring, Sammy, like, kicks him out of the ring again, and Strowman leaves. Like, so stupid. Like, what? why didn't they have a match? As much as I don't want to see Sammy Zayn be fed to Braun Strowman, 
This was pointless. They literally didn't need to have this on Raw. If they weren't going to do anything with it, this didn't need to be on Raw. They had two pointless spots with Strowman this week. Awful. Unbelievable. I can't even talk anymore about this because there's nothing to talk about. It's just awful. Again, more garbage and more fuel added into the dumpster, just piling it up. Just we think Sami Zayn should definitely go to SmackDown too if he's going to keep putting in this crap. God, and to make matters worse about this, worse about this dumpster fire. Basically, the thing that lit the match and threw it in was this next promo, <laughs> which is sad to say because Paul Heyman usually does yeah. a great job. Paul Heyman is usually the king. I say it every week. He's the king of promos. Can pull off the most incredible promos, most intense that, promo that you've ever most heard. Personal promo. Yep. This promo they had this week with Brock Lesnar had one word. And you guessed it, hashtag dumpster fire. This was the dumpster fire, like, final match into the bucket. <laughs> Done. So we had Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman come out. And they're ch- basically, I guess the, the point was to try to get Goldberg over, and it failed completely. But that's the whole problem. Then don't have it in Brock Lesnar's Then that's home exactly coming. it. Why does WWE do that in his home? Are they... Re- what? Who made that decision? Michael Hayes. 100% it was Michael Hayes. Oh, good idea. Let's see. Oh, oh we got to get Goldberg over. Let's have Brock Lesnar go out there in his hometown. Yeah, he'll get over that way. Wrong. So Paul Wrong. tries to give him cheap heat by saying, those people cheering for Goldberg right now, you're not. Yeah, and he's trying to get the crowd to go with them, and yeah. it's just not those working. People chanting Goldberg right now, yeah. and still people are chanting, Goldberg Su- sucks. And, and that Suplex was City, and I'm like, oh, man, this is done. And then, Brock Lesnar was laughing. Yeah. <laughs> It was just, it was bad. It looked like t- Paul Heyman just looked awkward, too. Because and he was trying to get Lesnar yeah. heat, and it wasn't working in Minneapolis. <laughs> and the best part was, the reason Brock Lesnar's music hit was, that was WWE back, the backstage people going, okay, guys, got to get out of there. They started so that they would leave the ring. That wasn't the time they were supposed to leave the ring. That's why everyone's like, oh, that was a short promo. It's because WWE made it short. They started the music to, it was the signal to them that, okay, get out of the ring. Because apparently... <laughs> It was Vince just bad. Blew a gasket backstage. Yeah, apparently, Vince just lost his shit backstage. Well, well you Vince, expect? you're in Minneapolis, where Brock Lesnar's from. How are you gonna give him heat? If they wanted to give him heat, they should have put it in Goldberg's hometown of Atlanta. Yeah, and then he would have got some heat. Oh my god! But no, is... you have Lesnar go home. Of course, he's gonna get you. This was so stupid. This was maybe the stupidest move. I think this is number one, the stupidest move I've ever seen there to be do. Number one, it has to be. It might be up there. I think it is. That's so dumb. That literally, we just saw a dumpster fire start on TV. You could have put it anywhere else, and he would have probably got some heat. Yeah. What do you expect? Did they not see that coming? Did they not say, hmm, we're going to Brock Lesnar's hometown next week. Think you'll get booed. So dumb. No. They're in Connecticut next week. Why don't they just save it for then? Why don't they have Goldberg come out again this week? Well, Goldberg's coming out next week in Hartford. Oh, no, they can't. I guess they couldn't have Goldberg come out this week because he would have got heat. He would have yeah. been booed. Yeah. Well, they're going to have next week of crickets in Hartford. Oh, great. Thank, can't wait for that. So, we'll get into the main event of the show. We have uh, Kevin Owens for Seth Rollins versus Chris Jericho. And this match, you fell asleep. I fell asleep. Okay. It went all way too long, and we know now why. Because the Jericho or the, the, po- the Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar promo got cut short. So they had to extend this match. But I don't. the reason I don't get is it went over the time limit for Raw. It went 15 minutes after 11 o'clock. So I don't understand. But it was just, it was, there was so many endings to the match. I was just getting very, very confused. And once again, who wins the match? Our boy, Seth Rollins. With, I, I like woke up at the last second and saw... The double, yeah, roll up on the both double Jericho roll up. And he Owens. literally from the top turbo comes down and double rolls up both of them and pins them at the same time. The crazy ass ending. That was pretty cool. That was the only highlight of the match. <laughs> it's crazy. So uh, I guess since the the rumored match for Hell in a Cell was supposed to be originally it's supposed to be Balor Owens and Jericho, and then when Balor got injured, it was supposed to be Rollins Owens Jericho. Yeah. So now they just gave it to us on the go home show before Hell in a Cell, <laughs> and it was. Literally bored. You were sleep during it. <laughs> yeah, that's how bad it was. It was like uh, sleep time. Yeah, and literally there's nothing else to talk about in that. I just, and it, I guess it showed more. Dis- I don't even know if it showed deception. It's, it, again, Jericho it's focusing on. more on Jericho than the title match. The only thing that happened at the end was when Jericho left and didn't come back to help Owens when he got his ass yeah. kicked by R- Rollins. Exactly. That was that was it. it. So again, they're focusing on the deception. So we'll see at Hell in a Cell. Maybe Chris Jericho interferes. Who knows? 
I, it's probably a possi- It's probably a high possibility. I think Jericho will interfere, and I think he'll cost Owens the match by accident. Yeah, it's tune a good in, prediction, and we'll get into our real predictions yeah. this uh, this Friday. Tune in, guys. Hell in the cell predictions. So, we went into the part of the show. The blue brand. Team Blue, SmackDown. So, uh, let's get into this, ladies and gentlemen. SmackDown this week was slightly better than Raw. Slightly. It was definitely better than that dumpster fire of a show. Again, you hear it again. I want to I know. I want to put a counter how many times I've said dumpster fire this week. But, uh, yep. We're getting into SmackDown. And we open up SmackDown. <laughs> I know we were watching together and we we're like, oh, yep, switch the channel. Yeah. Well, with a, a Bray Wyatt versus Kane match. Wow, that's that's something different. I did not watch this match. I was flipping back between hockey and the World Series, and I was just like, you know what? This match is opening again. I'm not watching it. Oh, but it was a no disqualification match. Ooh. ooh, ooh. ooh. Oh, man. Wow. So, uh, no disqualification, Bray Wyatt and Kane. Uh, interesting, though. Luke Harper ends up coming out, and then uh, they're, they're uh, wearing their new uh, Wyatt shirt. This looks okay. I mean, whatever. They got a new shirt. Um, the Harper's not even wearing Eventually, it. Randy Orton comes out, and uh, there's like a face-off in the ring. Uh, and actually, Orton are actually about the, to do a double Yeah, are about to be a double Ray. finisher on Ray and Luke Harper. And then Randy Orton turns on Kane and gives him an RKO. At first, we're like, what? Ray, Orton heel turn? And then we thought, wait a minute. No. Wait, this is this playing mind games? It's weird. So he gets out of the ring, just walks out, and just leaves. And Bray's like... What the? What, it pins radio or pins Kane for At the least win. Bray got a win. Bray got a win. Oh my God! Bray win. Bray Wyatt got a win. Wow! Is it? It's slowly turning. His percentage is slowly turning, ladies and gentlemen. He's His been win winning lately. Finally! Wow! You know what that deserves title. Hello, WWE. Wake up. Hello. He needs a. He needs a feud. He needs a title. Put a title on the guy for Christ's sakes. Have a feud oh with my God. That's what people want. They want. Bray Wyatt to win a title. I could get behind a Ziggler Wyatt feud. That'd be great. I could, I like that because I don't think they feuded in the past, have they? At least one on one. I don't think so. I think it might have, but I don't know. I could get into that. Yeah. Um. We find out is it on? Uh, it's a talking smack or is a promo near the end of the show? Uh, Randy Orton says he's he's like if you can't beat him, join him. Ooh, so ooh. does that mean he's joining the Wyatts? No, he's doing pulling his old to- like normal Randy Orton. Make Are it we seem sure? Like I'm, your, I'm your friend, but keep your enemies closer. I guess. Kind of <laughs> Can you imagine him joining the Wyatts? It'd be like the whole Daniel Bryan thing. You just turn on him in two weeks. I think maybe that's what they're doing. Maybe they're trying. I mean, Randy Orton's over enough right now for some reason, but maybe that's what they're doing. It was like when he joined the Authority back again. When he he yeah. joined the Authority, but in really <laughs> in reality, he just joined back so he kicked Rollins' ass again. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Bray Wyatt getting another win. Kane, don't know how he's still on TV. But I'm, I'm tired. Can um, we not see Kane anymore, please? Can, um, we, can he just go? I think we need to buy one of our boy JD from NY's Get Off My TV t-shirts with Kane on with it. With Kane on it. I think we do. <laughs> Literally, he needs to get off TV. It's pissing me off, man. He's old. He's done everything he can in his career. He doesn't need to prove anything. Just go already. I don't want to see it anymore. I want to see corporate Kane. Let, yeah, let it be corporate game and, and a feud. Maybe try to take over Shane's spot or take over Brian's spot. Why doesn't he do that? Why do you have to see him physically wrestle, sort of wrestle? He was like, he was really slow this week. He looked really like he's slowing down a lot. I mean like big show slow. Like he was getting slow. I mean, I don't blame the guy. He's been doing it for how long? Yeah, he's like almost 40. He's like almost well, Undertaker's almost age, 50, actually. Man. 50, sorry. Like, I understand that he's slowing down, but then just like, just give it up, man. Oh, I just, whatever. We'll move on. It, the great Becky Lynch returns from an uh, undisclosed non-wrestling related Apparently she non-injury. Had something removed. It's something removed. Whatever that means. I mean, there's people saying on Twitter it was an abortion. People saying there was appendix. Uh, appendix, you know, whatever. Whatever it is, you know, I'm not going to let it get in the way of the Becky Lynch career or put out a blemish on it. I'm just going to move on from it like we all should, guys. So I was just really confused. I needed to know what happened. And we, we got filled in by Michael Chow. Thank you for that. Um, so Becky Lynch comes out and her return promo is quickly interrupted by your girl, Alexa Bliss. I couldn't run up the stairs quick enough. Is to growing entrance, weak on me. Is growing every single week on she's me. Growing in po- I told you, man. She's growing in popularity. She's she got that is heel the perfect look. heel. Great. Oh, she's got to look all right. <laughs> she came out this week. Oh, man. Whew. Those leather pants. Anyways, <laughs> um, 
the promo she cuts on Becky here is just unreal. I'm like, wow, this is this genius. She's the perfect heel. It's so good. But now we gotta wait till the Scotland SmackDown Live for this title rematch. And I, Alexa might win the title. I think she's gonna win it. I don't see Becky retaining. I know it's gonna be in Scotland. It's not really Becky's hometown, but like, I think she's gonna win it. I personally don't think she's going to win it, but because I, I think that their SmackDown's really high on Becky. They want her to be like their number one. Uh, it's so tough. I think you should be a but perfect champion, though. But then they have Nikki though. Bella as the yeah. leader. Fuck, but Nikki I Bella. think it was a great heel promo by Alexa. Every week she's going up the ladder, like gaining more mm-hmm. more um, ground or yeah. more momentum yeah, as I know a heel. Yeah, yeah. She's like almost like as we read that in Luke Gallus polls, like people compare her to Charlotte almost at yeah. that heel. She's good. She's talent. that good. I think her in ring skills aren't quite what they need to be to be a top heel. But really, we haven't really seen much of it because it's no. basically just a heel match. She's that, that she's feisty doing. heel diva that the uh, division needs, and I love that. And I love that it's on SmackDown to make them. They're they're they. The SmackDown Women's Division stands out 100 percent than the Raw window. It's way better. 100 percent. It's way better. Yeah. I don't know if that's on purpose, but it's way better. Yeah, she makes fun of Becky Lynch saying, "Where's the yellow brick road or something?" <laughs> yeah, that was great. and after it kicks her ass, spray paint. It, why is there a yellow spray paint can at ringside for one? Why is that even there underneath the table? I what's that? Know. What's it used for? I guess Alexa placed it there. Yeah, maybe unless it's just a random. There's always a random yellow spray paint Put can. The yellow brick line on Becky's back. Yeah. <laughs> That was great. That was fantastic. That was like a cl- that was like a, a, a attitude era heel promo, like, and then getting the yeah, spin, yeah, you know? exactly. And I think people are finally starting to get behind Alexa and like saying like, wow, this girl's good at being a heel. I love it. I love it. So great promo by Alexa Bliss. As, you know what? Love her. Yeah, love her. So move on SmackDown. And they have something that Raw didn't do this week, which is weird. I don't know why, because it would make something worth watching on Raw. We had a qualifying match, uh, a tag team match to qualify for the top five tag team match at Survivor Series. Hype Bros versus the Ascension, all right? I, um, I, I love assume, my boys' Ascension. I, I assume them. the Raw is waiting because they still have Hell in a Cell. You have yeah. to still have Hell in a Cell happen. We're going to have to rush everything now, though. they got to wait. Oh, that's what Raw does best. <laughs> I guess. But the Ascension, they face the Hype Bros. I would love the Ascension to win this match. But They have new face paint. They have new face paint. I mean, they they can be a credible tag team in the SmackDown division if they're pushed the right way. I've been saying that ever since they debuted. The, if they need to be, If they want to be successful... And be looked at as a dominant tag team. They have to start winning. They can't be losing all the time. They haven't crushed anybody. They haven't. Why wasn't it the Ascension destroying American Alpha and injuring them? Why? I don't why? think they've won a match since they went to SmackDown. I don't understand. They, they just look weak. They look weak. I don't understand. But their gimmick isn't supposed to make them look weak. No, they were dominant NXT. They beat everybody. They like were almost undefeated. I don't understand that. Almost as bad. Where's Brazongo at? Yeah. Yeah. Where is Brazongo? It's a stupid backstage segments I see every week yeah. on the WWE <laughs> Facebook or YouTube channel about Tyler Breeze looking for Fandango. Like, why aren't they a credible tag team? I don't both know. of they them could are be great too. Wrestlers. They're both again. It's just, they push the wrong people. I'm not saying the hype bros are the wrong people here because they have a lot of hype behind them. Let's just let's say that. Like, it's, especially it's Mojo Rawley carrying that team right now. Well, with his 18 um, Red Bulls, he drinks before he comes to the but ring. They defeat the Ascension. They are the first team to qualify. Good for them. Mojo you know. Rawley came out in his Green Bay Packers yeah. shit. I mean, there's not really a lot of tag teams. Because it's top five. Like you, you're you going to have the Hype Bros. You're going to have American Alpha. You're going to have the Usos. You're going to have maybe Brazongo shows up. And then you have the Vaude Villains, Brazongo, and the Ascension. So you have one of these guys that's going to make that and last Slater spot. Slater and Rhino. Yeah, Slater. Slater and Rhino are going to be one. Yeah, I forgot. So you have that last spot between three te- other teams. Like, look at the tag team division on SmackDown. It's insane. And look at the three teams that are going to be left out. Yeah. Brazongo, Ascension, and Vaude Villains. The three teams that are just getting jobbed every week. Or we don't see them every week. Unbelievable. They need to do something. I hope something, like, help we get, like, an upset or something leading for these I think qualifying. I think if... I think one of those teams should go over to Raw because Raw needs some tag team. They do. Up. They do. <laughs> it's getting it's You know getting what's bland. bad when Raw has to put a team of two um, single stars together oh, yeah, of Cesaro yeah. and Sheamus to be in the tag team division because they have literally Nobody three else. teams. <laughs> and then you got the Shining Stars and Gold uh, and Truth stuff. God. And then you have New Day, Enzo, and Cast in the club. Three credible teams on that show. If you move Ascension over Brazongo or Vaude Villains, they could be feuding with yeah, one of those other they teams. Could, and if you push them the right way, they could be credible and be one of the top tag teams on Raw. I agree 100%. So Hype Bros wins this match, of course. Whatever. We'll move on from that. 
So we move on to kind of the qualifying to be a team captain for the top five women's Natal- match. Natalia has a promo backstage yeah. with Daniel saying that she has an idea to make SmackDown's women's division better is to have the Queen of Hearts as their captain. Ooh, oh, Natty, which, yeah, we'll not, not even let you compete for it. We'll just make you the captain so 100%. Says, okay, I've got a better idea. You face Nikki Bella tonight. Of course, winner, Nikki Bella. And yep. the winner becomes the team captain. So I already know who's going to win this match before but it even fucking starts. Not, to make it even worse, the loser doesn't even get to be on the team. Oh, man. So, yeah, okay, we know who's winning. We know who's winning. Like, this is the most predictable match I've ever seen. Poor Natty. She just <laughs> get, she goes from not, to not even being in the match. So, oh, my God, to this. So, she faced Nikki Bella, and she loses. All right. There's nothing to talk about. She lost. We have Nikki Bella uses the about, a- STF. Yeah. Are you fucking finisher. kidding me? To make matters worse, Carmella made fun of Nikki Bella last week, comparing her to John Cena and being there just so because Nikki of John Bella Cena. So, Nikki Bella goes out this week and says, okay, I'll do what John Cena, Cena does, does. What? You're just being a hypocrite, Nikki Bella. That is so stupid. I don't understand that. Whatever. F- fuck it. Let her have it. I don't care. Of course Nikki Bella is going to be the captain of Team yeah, SmackDown. Yeah, of course, man. She's married to John Cena. I guarantee if she wasn't, she wouldn't be. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me. It's like, oh, no, no, she's not. She'd be a credible t- a woman's Kyle Masters. What the hell, man? No, no. She'd suck. If she wasn't with John Cena, she'd be god-awful. She'd be down there with Natalia, poor Natalia, because I think she could be actually credible. Because she's good. She has good. She comes from a wrestling background. She's the the only woman to ever graduate from the Heart Dungeon. Unreal. But then we have Carmella come out after. Right, yeah, like literally right after Nikki won. Like, Baymella Nikki, like, hand goes up, and then Carmella just takes. Yeah, her beat her down, beat her down, Baymella. Yeah, that's why I love her. Love oh, her. I love had, this like, these feisty, jeans this week. savage mm. Baymella. She had those last week too. Oh God. Mm. And just beats up Nikki Bell and walks away. That's right. It was F A B O U L O. God, I can't even spell it. F A B U L. I'm just so. Oh, I'm so in love with Bay Mella <laughs> that I can't even spell it. So is this? Are they both going to be on the team? Because now that basically cements everyone else. If, if yeah. Natty's not in the match and Eva Marie's not in the match, that means they only have Becky four. Lynch, Alexa Bliss, Nikki Bella, Naomi, Naomi, and all either uh, Carmella. Yeah, Carmella. That's it. That's it. <laughs> no, it's your top five. Because you, you just dis- you just disowned Natty from the match. Or if by any chance Eva Maurice decides to no. show her face before Survivor Series. I hope to God she doesn't. <laughs> but basically their team's already set now. Yeah. So you know Nikki Bella and Carmella are going to be gonna on fight the same each other. Team. That's going to screw up uh, a little bit there. Unless one of them causes them to lose on purpose in the beginning of the match. Uh, we'll have to see. So we'll move on. Uh Okay, so th- this match didn't make sense, but it had a stipulation to sort of make sense. Uh, Miz and Ziggler and had a promo. and With the Spirit Squad and Slater and Rhino came out to save, and they challenged Slater and Rhino for the titles, and they said... Why the Spirit Squad is still on the TV? This is worse, because th- the worst part is the Spirit Squad got a... They got a tag team title match over American Alpha. Over the Usos. The VOD villains. VOD villains. Hype Bros. Ascension. Bur- the Ongo. Spirit Squad. It, Are you fucking kidding me? It's almost as bad as uh, the headbangers being put in the title tournament. <sighs> I fucking hate the Spirit Squad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the one-off when they came back for the first time in a long time. I was like, okay, this yeah, is kind of We said funny. that. Like, we said, like, just, this is stupid. But now, they're not even on the roster. They get a, are you, they get a title match. My God, they suck. They absolutely suck. Nikki, what did you say? There is no hype behind Spirit what did you Squad. Say Mikey, looks like? Mikey looks like a bald gold dust without paint. He looks just looks weird as hell. Thank God they didn't lose the titles to these guys, or else I would have been it. I would have. Been like, I'm not watching SmackDown until the Spirit Squad loses the titles. It was a pretty cool spot that ended the match, though, when uh, Miz and and Ziggler were like both of them were on commentary for this match. Of course. Yeah. So it was basically just them bickering back and forth. We didn't even get to hear about the match. And, and then they get up and they're about to fight, and, and Slater like hit. knocks yeah, Kenny. Kenny into Miz, and they go flying, and then. Mikey turns around into a huge gore. It was a huge really- gore, man. He got broken. <laughs> I hope that injures his ass so we don't have to fucking see these guys Gordon anymore. Peter, gore. Gore. God. Oh, I just, I really hope we never see them ever again. I hope he gets injured 
And it's bad to say that I want a human being to get injured, but I hope that broke him in half. Seriously, like, I hope literally. That, I hope that was the body bag for Mikey there. Yeah, zip up the body bag, get them out of here, <laughs> ship them off to TNA and put them in the grave with them. God damn, man. They need to stay off TV. Honestly, if Kenny Dykstra was signed to be a singles wrestler, I wouldn't mind Whatever. That. But Mikey, you can get the hell out of here, man. Or you can paint yourself like Goldust and go be his, you know, his stunt double or something. Because you look exactly <laughs> like him. But thank God Slater and Rhino won this match. God. Because of Rhino. And yeah. it was because of Rhino that they had to defend the Titan Yeah, it was a little dissension at the beginning of the promo when Deception. he said, I don't want to have the match and because I have, uh, what do you say? I he said I have uh, a vacation to yeah. go or something. <laughs> something like that. And then Rhino was like, I thought, were, I thought he was referring to the, the Shining Stars and like, Oh, what is yeah. going on here? Maybe he did buy their timeshare. <laughs> the Rhino said, we accept. So you see some kind of... Yeah, a little bit of deception there. Yeah. Um, but anyways, thank God the Spirit Squad didn't win the titles or I would have had the boycott so Hopefully SmackDown. this is the end of the Spirit Squad. I really hope so. Um, moving on to the main event of SmackDown, AJ Styles defending his uh, world heavyweight... Sh- or no, it was uh, AJ Styles versus Dean Ambrose. And if Dean Ambrose won, he would get a title shot. And of course, um, throughout the whole show, James Ellsworth is back. I thought they were going to be done with this guy. Trying no. to ask Dean Ambrose if he could be at ringside, please. Uh, he's I, asking again, again like we said show. last week, I'd be okay if they signed him and he was doing something else. Just stay away from the title picture. And nope, doesn't look like he can ever stay away from this title picture. So Ambrose finally agrees to let him come to ringside with him. Like, oh, fantastic. Terrible choice. God. As the match, the match wasn't uh, that great. No. But it, the way it ended... Um, <laughs> okay, I find that that was hilarious. I I, I love the ending. The, I, the ending was pretty great. Yeah, but it was it started <laughs> that drop with Styles kick. drop kick James Ellsworth out of nowhere. That was the, the greatest drop kick I've ever seen. That it was, was just so... like he was not expecting. You just stand there on the bottom <laughs> and he and then flies backwards. Flies backwards. <laughs> And so what Ambrose, a sell. Ambrose tosses yeah. the right, right. out of the ring at some point. <laughs> Ellsworth is a good seller. <laughs> and seller. Ellsworth gets up and he starts like hulking up. <laughs> Ellsworthing up. <laughs> Ellsworthing up. And the crowd's getting behind him. And, and the no chin music. No chin music to, <laughs> to AJ Styles. <laughs> Styles with a great sell on this too. Oh, man. And he just went flying. Yeah. And then Ellsworth was like, yeah, yeah. And then Ambrose is in the ring. And Ambrose's face. And Mike Yoda's like, what the hell, man? <laughs> Ambrose's face is like, no, no. Don't don't disqualify me, please. And then Mike's like, I got it. Mike Yoda's like, I got it. I got it. Turns <laughs> around. <laughs> Amber, if we could get a GIF. If Michael Chow or someone can send us a gift GIF of Dean Ambrose's face when that when he got disqualified, I love that. Please do. If you do, tag me or Corporate Cappy in it. Just do it. Someone That'd be hilarious. Find a gift of that Dean Ambrose. Oh face. my god! And then he, <laughs> Ellsworth is like, "Oh shit! What did I just do?" <laughs> and like he's crying at the end of the show while uh, Styles grabs the title and he's celebrating like he actually did something. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm the champ, baby. Champ that runs the I camp. I love it. It and then, like, great. it just shows Elworth, like, literally, like, bawling his eyes out. And Dean Harris going, what the hell, Honestly, man? Honestly, I thought this was a great ending. Uh, okay, that literally... Honest. Everything else about Ellsworth and the whole other show, fuck, fuck it. But this ending was prime. It I'm made like, okay, sense for stuff. Yeah. Like, you know what? And then afterwards, <laughs> they had the Talking Smack segment where, you know, Ellsworth was, like, crying his eyes. He's like, oh, I'm so embarrassed for myself. And, you know, I'm so sorry for Dean because he's helped me through everything. And then I just cost him a world title match. And... Dana, uh, Dana Bryan asked, do you think there'll be any retribution from Dean Ambrose? And Ellsworth says, well, if there is any, I deserve it. Yeah. Well, so, you know, I guess he's like, he's owning up to it. So, um, you know. And then we found out afterwards that they had a dark main event after, which was Ziggler. Yeah, they, they had a title match in the main event, a dark match. Great. You couldn't put that on SmackDown. We had to see the Spirit Squad fucking get a title match. Why wasn't that the dark match? <laughs> I would have loved that being the dark match and me see Miz versus Ziggler again. Unbelievable! That and it, 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 that right there is what brought SmackDown down to a five with all the other voters. I'm thinking so. Yeah, so we into our ratings. So I forgot to get the ratings. SmackDown. I'll agree with people. It was a five out of ten. It was five. It was half good, half bad. Like there was stuff that made sense and it was perfect. Like the uh, Carmella thing and the Alexa Bliss promo. Um, the ending of the Styles thing was great. So I'm giving it a five out of ten. Um, Raw, guys, I know everyone's giving it a 3, 3.5. It's the first time ever on the show I'm giving Raw a 1 out of 10. <laughs> 1. And that was only because of the list of Jericho. That was it. Everything else was mediocre to shouldn't have been on TV. Um, Raw, I'm giving it a 2 for the list of Jericho and the Charlotte Heel promo for the match. See, I... Fine. I changed it to 1.5 because I'll give that a 0.5 just because McFoley ruined it. 
<laughs> so big ups to Charlotte and Chris Jericho and Raw. That was about it. And maybe the the cruiserweight match. Yeah, yeah. That we that ties into the one. Yeah, but like the rest was just mediocre to dumpster fire. I don't even think I think we forgot to talk about the cruiserweight match actually. Oh, we did. The TJ Perkins. Yeah, we'll we go did. over that quick. Okay. So, uh, so Perkins uh, had a match with. Uh, no, no, it was no. Uh, Brian Kendrick who had a match with Rich, Rich Swan. Swan. Um, really good match, actually. I love Rich Swan. He, his athletic ability is just. Something else. I would have loved Cedric Alexander, though. I'm being biased a little bit, but you know, he was on Superstars. As we said, I can. Earlier. I still get behind Rich Juan. He's still good. He's and hilarious. Love his entrance. Going into Kendrick's match on Sunday with T.J. Perkins. Perkins was at on commentary again. Yeah. And Rich Swan wins with a roll yep. up. And at first, I was really pissed off about this because, like I always say, that the number one contender should look strong going into a uh, a title match, but. They did a backstage promo afterwards where Brian Kendrick was basically like really desperate and like on his last last hope, yep. basically asking TJ Perkins to please lose on Sunday for him. Mm-hmm. To asking him, you know, this is my last yeah, shot. Like I don't crying. have anything left. He's like, I support my kids. You were, you were, with, uh, you. I brought you into my house, man. Uh, it's not happening, Brian Kendrick. TJ Perkins ain't no pushover. And there wasn't any attack or anything. It was no. just Brian was like, Kendrick Whoa. just looking really desperate at the end of the match. I think that was perfectly well done. That was the only thing that was rightly booked on Raw. And it's sad enough that it's a cruiserweights which Vince doesn't want to showcase. And it's sad that we almost forgot about it because yeah. we were just talking about how bad Raw was. It, that's how bad Raw is. You, it got overshadowed, that match. The cruiserweights got overshadowed how bad it was. And they only got like five minutes. Like the cruiserweights should be getting more time. At least a half TV. hour. I, I'm telling you right now, a half hour would be great. Like look at all the shit we could have cut out this week and actually had the cruiserweights get a decent Exactly, time. 100%. Could have cut out the Braun Strowman, Sami Zayn crap. Oh my god, I can't. And, and the golden. It truth. hurts my head to like try to rant about thing. anything else. <laughs> so, uh, I will give Raw a two out of ten. Yeah, I'll bump it up to a two as well. So we're equal on that, and I'm giving SmackDown a five. And I'm giving SmackDown a six. Ooh. I'm giving it. I liked the AJ Styles and Dean Ambrose with uh, the no chin music at the end <laughs> by James Ellsworth. I liked the Nikki Bella and Carmella spot afterwards. And I loved, loved, like, loved <laughs> the Alexa Bliss uh. spoiling Becky Lynch's return. Uh, that's one of the best heel promos yeah. we've seen by either male or female in a yeah, long time. That was great. So I am yeah. giving SmackDown a six this week. Love it. All right. That's a good, it's a good corporate pick, good corporate rating. And I'm hoping next week's Raw is better, but again, it's going to be in a shitty city, Hartford, Connecticut. The crowds are not always great there. They're just not booking Raw yeah. properly. It's too casual. There's too many casual fans in Hartford, man. So good luck to them. Hopefully SmackDown uh, improves from this week too as well. Just the way um, that they book Raw, it's just it's just so terrible. Yeah. Like the way that they yeah. the way that they lay out the show and the way that they push certain people and the way they give us certain matches and certain feuds it just does yeah, not I work. I hope they're not doing it on purpose. I really hope they improve. <laughs> So, anyways, that's going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. And that's going to wrap it up for week number 29 of the Lowdown Show Brand Wars on the Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are a Canadian-based WWE podcast that reviews and discusses Monday Night Raw and Tuesday Night SmackDown from the past week. Also, during the show, we have our Twitter poll segment, the Luke Gallows polls, and WWE headlines, which we're missing this week because not a lot of headlines. But uh, next week, there should be some WWE headlines where we talk about any important news in WWE. Remember, every week the Lowdown Show is broadcasted live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP. And if you'd like to join in on the conversation, have your thoughts and questions and discussed on the podcast, tweet us at NoHoldsBarWP or by dropping a comment on YouTube. I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and I am every week continued to be joined by my co-host. He is Mr. Corporate himself, the blissful boss, Corporate Cappy. Hopefully Hell in a Cell does not bliss me off this week (laughs) yep and as always guys we're here reminding you to keep it on the lowdown